Hi, this is Bob Dunham. Welcome to the next step of our journey into leader action. We have talked about care, commitment, coordination of action. We've talked about the essential skills of initiating action with a request or an offer, making a promise. The purpose of coordinating action is to get on the same page. And there is a unit of coordination that is a practical skill. It is always present when we do well. And there is something missing or broken when we're having difficulty. This is called the conversation for action. The conversation for action is the unit of coordination of action. So I'm going to briefly go through this with you. And it's... Uh, it's available to you to come back, and it's a very powerful way to understand action, how it's initiated, how it's coordinated, what needs to happen step by step. When I first began to work with this framework, I was working in a company that was very dysfunctional, had not been able to get product out the door for years. And when we began to use this conversational framework, we began to have teams that were doing extraordinary work. We, we fulfilled our promises. We delivered products that had been waiting years to be delivered in six months with 10 times higher quality than had ever been achieved before. That was my first example and experience of the power of coordination. And we have since, in the Institute for Generative Leadership, been working with many organizations like yours and many leaders who have elevated their organizations to another level. So how do we look at this? And this is going to be a, a conversation that may look like a model, but this is not a model. This is a practice. This is a skill. And we're simply going to show you how to pay attention in a powerful way to what's happening in the coordination of action. And this is the structure of the conversation for action. So if we look here, first of all, the conversation for action always has two people in it. No matter how many people you're talking to, every person is sharing a different conversation with you. And there is a role of a customer and a performer. A customer is someone who is asking someone else to perform or who accepts offers to be satisfied. And we all take the role of customer at different moments in our lives, no matter what our rank or title or role or profession. We always ask other people to do things for us, and we ask them so we can be satisfied. Uh, please pass the salt uh, could be just a, a simple example, but the same structure applies to uh, will you join me and let's create the future. The other role is performer, is the person who commits to action. This is why commitment is so important. The commitment defines the action, and that is done in the conversation. So the, the power and value of your actions is not simply your performance, is whether or not it has been coordinated, whether or not it is valuable for a customer, and whether or not it is, it is aligned with your teammates so that you're pulling the rope in the same direction, you're coordinating well. So how does the conversation begin? It begins with a request, which we spoke about, that has a structure. There is a skill to it. Do you want to make a bigger future? Do you want to create more value? Learn to make bigger requests. We also can start the conversation with an offer which is a promise waiting to be accepted. The request is made by the customer asking someone to perform. The performer makes the offer to begin the action with the customer. This means that you don't have to be the boss to get things started. You can make offers. You can make suggestions. Either way, we start a conversation for action. And the commitment we have in teamwork, in building the future together, is to have this conversation, to listen to each other, to get on the same page, 
and coordinate action. Now, we're gonna we're gonna walk through this conversation. Started with a request made by a customer, and they're asking for something that we call a condition of satisfaction. They're not asking just for something to be done. They're asking for it to be done in a way that produces satisfaction for themselves or for their customers is often why we make requests to satisfy other people. And so after the request is made, the point here is we have to come to agreement. We have to understand, we have to coordinate what is the future that we share. Are we on the same page? Are, are, are we clear? And so there are four categories of committed response, only four. Everything else is going to be unclear, messy, uncommitted. So if I ask you to do something and you say, maybe, what, what's going to happen? That's not a clear commitment. And so we'll see what the menu is for making clear commitments to coordinate better, including that when, you're, when we're not sure. So if a request is made and the performer says, I promise, and they can say this in whatever words make sense, we're not focused on terminology. The word promise is not something you need to say all the time. It's something we listen for. You can say, yeah, I'll do it, and that's a promise. Count on me, that's a promise. Yes, that's a promise. But the category of listening is, is there commitment here to fulfill the condition of satisfaction, which includes, remember, the condition of satisfaction, the background, and the time. It's all included here. Second, a committed response can actually be no. We call this a decline. And again, it's not about the word. Many people are afraid to say no. And if you have an organization or a team where people are afraid to say no, then they cannot be honest. If something cannot happen, they should say no, that cannot happen. They should. We should not have a culture in which people say, I have to say yes or else I'll be fired. So we need to know when no is appropriate. When is no appropriate? No is appropriate when it will produce more satisfaction than a yes. No is appropriate when something cannot happen. So let's be honest. Then third, there is a counter offer. Remember, these are not words to use. These are categories. And counteroffer is saying, well, uh, instead of what you asked for, how about this? I can't deliver when you asked for, but I could do it a little later. Does that work for you? And so the point here is that we're getting on the same page. We're not simply transacting uh, like putting in the coin and, and wanting to get what we want from a vending machine. We're actually coming to agreement. We're coordinating. And counteroffers can go back and forth. This is called negotiation. And then there is a move called commit to commit later that is very, very important. So when we have a situation where you ask me to do something and I'm not sure what the right answer is, this is often where we hear a maybe or I'll try, or, but I actually want to know, are you going to do it or not? You want to know that as a customer. I would want to know that as a customer. I want, to, I want to say yes or no, or I could do this instead, but maybe I have to do something to clarify my answer. I have to talk to my boss. I have to talk to my team. I have to do some planning. I have to do some analysis. I need to check with other people. And so the move is to say, I'm not in condition to make a clear, committed response in this moment. I'll commit to get back to you later. And there's a time by this time. And we haven't come to agreement yet on the, the request, but we're still committed in the conversation. And this is the way that we coordinate action well, to be clear where we are making trustworthy yeses, to be clear where no is appropriate, to be clear when we need to listen to each other for counteroffers, and that we're still coordinating 
but I'll get back to you and we'll nail things down. This was a breakthrough in my career because the organization that I had worked for that could not function appropriately was because no one ever said no. No one ever counteroffered. And so there were these huge lists of yeses that you couldn't trust. And when we began, began to finally say, this is a yes, this is a no, and this is a, a something we should talk about, we began to have people own their agreements and the performance elevated. And this is essential when we're creating new conditions of satisfaction, when we're taking on new action. So this is the moment of the request. This is the moment of a promise, or else we're going to wind up in a decline, which means we're open for other conversations. That one's done. And this is the phase of execution. This is where a lot of people think the work is done here. But the work of the manager and leader and the coordination of the team happens here. And when we get to this point, we need to let each other know. Have you ever had someone do something for you on time, but they never told you? And as far as you were concerned, it wasn't done. This is the move of communicating, hey, I'm done. Uh, if I'm a performer, I've done what I agreed to do. We call that a declare complete. Again, it's not about using the words. It's about understanding the move. And then we have this phase where the customer declares satisfaction or dissatisfaction. And we know where we are with our customer. These are not discretionary techniques. Every move here is the name of a moment where one person must coordinate to the other person to get back on the same page. If I don't make a request, we're not on the same page. If I don't know whether you have a yes or no, we're not on the same page. If I don't know when you're done, we're not on the same page. That's coordination. That's why this is so essential. Some people who have a uh, difficulty with structure say this is too structured. I'm sorry, uh, there is structure in the world. Chemistry doesn't care if you agree with it. Gravity doesn't care if you agree with it. This is the structure. And so by learning it, we can use the structure. You have a skeleton. You have lungs. You have a heart. Those are not problems. They enable you for action. This enables you. There is also, any time after a request is made, it's possible that as a customer, I'm all of a sudden no longer committed to that request, and I need to communicate it, to coordinate it, to get back on the same page. We call that a cancel. And again, it's not the word. It's saying, hey, I don't need it anymore. And it's also true that any time after the promise, that if I'm not committed as a performer to fulfill or I cannot fulfill, I need to re-coordinate. We call that move or, or revoke. Again, it's not a word. It's like, hey, it's not going to happen. We need to talk. We, we're not going to be able to go forward with that. So this beautiful, elegant structure is about how we coordinate, how we stay on the same page. And every move here is simply a move that's needed when the future changes for one party in an agreement and they need to communicate to the other. This will serve you, your team, your organization, your community, because this is the structure that may be missing to be clear, to be honest, to be committed. And this is how we coordinate action to create the future. So chew on this. Practice it. Again, it's not a model to remember. Uh, you have some of this information already provided for you, but it will help you create the future you care about. And one more step in our conversation is going to be seeing the power of the promise. And that'll be our next conversation in the journey into leader action. Bye-bye.